and welcome back to DreamHack Winter 2015 here in Sweden, Jan Shopping. I'm your host, Nim Schroden is on a break, and I'm here with Lothar and Raven. And guys, how, how are you doing? This tournament is so good so far. I, I feel like this is the best event today that we had, uh, especially because it has the vibe of the... Uh, just reminiscence me, reminiscence me of the tournaments we had in uh, other card games, you know, and this is something I was missing all the time. So I'm really happy to be here and to cast this tournament because it feels special. Yeah, it's it's very special. And Raven, how do you feel about this tournament yourself? Yeah, I mean, ac echo what Lothar says, really. The, um, for me, it's my first dream hack I'm casting. I'm first dream hack ever, actually, for me going to. But the actual, um, just having the event and everyone sat opposite each other on the tables, like you said about the sort of traditional card game style, it is really good. And just the atmosphere. And even after the game, all the players stand just, you know, go stand one to one side, have a little chat about how everyone's games went. And uh, it's just a really good atmosphere. It's awesome. Talking about the other card games that Lothar mentioned, we do have a player who is really famous in other card games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elki is the professional pro player, <laughs> professional pro player, <laughs> professional player from poker, and he's now transitioning to Hearthstone. And uh, he was also a professional StarCraft player, so he has quite the experience in competitive gaming, and hopefully he will do well in Hearthstone too. Uh, we can now see him when uh, Amanda will move <laughs> a little bit, but uh, <laughs> uh, Elki will be. Playing against Hotform, who yeah, just Hotform. returned from BlizzCon with his second place. So what do we know about Hotform, Raven? Yeah, so he got his uh, his second place at BlizzCon, as we saw. So pre pretty much like his best performance by far. And yeah, um, and what we've heard about, at least today, is that he's bringing some very interesting decks. So uh, I'm really glad we've actually got to cast the game, just because I want to see what he's done. Because even in his BlizzCon uh, decks, he played like Warrior with Nexus Champion Saradin, which is interesting, not something you normally see too much. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm just excited to see what he's actually playing. So that'll be really good. And then on the flip side, obviously, to see Elki, as you said, to uh, see how he's going to perform in his first... I mean, was that Seat Story? Right? Yeah. But uh, see how he perform at like, the first major Hearthstone event. Right now they are 1-2, uh, so actually they are kind of on, on the verge of elimination. Like, I if one of them loses, he'll have a 1-3 score, which means there is no chance for top 16. They can still obviously continue playing because this is a Swiss tournament. So as long as you just want to, like, hang out with people and have fun, uh, you can just still un um, stay and, con and continue playing. I, I feel like um, almost everyone here should play till the end of the tournament because... Um, it adds legitimacy to your, you know, just resume when you will be at six free at a DreamHack event, or just not not to drop out at zero free or one free because it's just look bad, you know. When someone will just look uh, look up at your Gosu Gamers ranking or uh, just in your Liquipedia page, and you'll see that oh, well, I didn't do it that you well in a Swiss you tournament. You can still go to seven, Lothar. Well, you know, yeah. a two free score <laughs> can still turn into the seven. 2-7 might be really bad, really bad. But at the same time, I, I feel like if you go to DreamHack to play, I feel like you should play the whole tournament. So I would love to see people doing that, even if they have like free free losses at some point. Will you, will you, would you play, Raven? Uh, yeah, I think a, a, a strong part of me definitely would. It depends how I actually felt uh, you know, at the time, because if you're really not not happy about the situation and i do understand that but on the flip side it's you it's pretty much a practice session as well even though you can't go through you're playing against some of the best players you're ever going to meet because we've got some like pretty much the top players in the world or a good chunk of them at least at this event and uh, just to see what they've brought in the sort of new format the uh, new cards have come out very recently to see what other players are doing with them and mm -hmm. uh, just just to get an extra idea and more practice more than anything we've already seen brand today we haven't seen that much of Reno. There was one Reno deck played by Vortex, but we didn't really catch up Reno being played. Yeah, well, there was uh, one Reno played by... Who was that? Oh, maybe I wasn't casting the game. Yeah, I think you actually missed that one. There was a, a one additional Reno, but it wasn't played. Because, uh, yeah, I know, Ignite was playing that Reno, and he was yeah. already killed before he could have played the Reno. Oh. So, <laughs> you know. The counter to Reno is killing someone before yeah. turn six. <laughs> yeah, it might be a good counter to a deck that is uh, based on a heal to full health. So, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, so, Elki versus Hotform is going to be our first match. We have a second match stage as well, if the guys finish it uh, faster. It will be Sixo versus Frezar. So, Frezar is back. He's still playing, he's still performing. And uh, six on Fraser, I think they are two one. So losing here at this stage doesn't eliminate you from the tournament mm -hmm. yet, but you really don't want to have two losses because if you have two losses, you can't lose any more games if you want, if you're wishing for top sixteen. Yeah, well, it makes it kind of more stressful for a player when he's on the brink of the elimination, and uh, both four players he that we are having here on the future table 
are in the same um, spot. So if they lose this game, it might be very hard to come back. And for one of the uh, players, it will be actually impossible. But at the same time, uh, the comfort zone that you, c that you can have after winning one of those matches is that you can still lose the one game. You, you don't have to worry yet uh, about it. But at the same time, of course, you want to have the best tiebreakers. So you don't really want to lose any games at all, of course. Uh, cause and even if you want, I if you if you would like to lose a game because you have to, an example, uh, if you like it, you didn't bring like bring like your best lineups or whatever, you would like to lose in the last round because that uh, just pumps your tiebreakers up. So I know we'll be jumping into the game right now between Hot Form and Elki. Hot Form Elki. By the way, you mentioned tiebreakers, Lothar. I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with the term. Raven, can you explain that one? Yeah, so um, in, in like a, a, a simple fashion, I guess, a lot of the time Swiss works in the fact that the tie breaks are based off how you, the people you won, uh, lost to or won against performed in the tournament as well. So if you lose to someone who's gone 0-5, your tie breaking score is significantly lower than if you lose to someone who's gone 6-0, for example. So that's uh, on the base of it, how it will actually work. And for a lot of these guys who are maybe going 7-2, it's actually going to be really important. So actually, at some point, you might want to continue playing even if you're losing, because let's say one SK guy played against you, so you play versus your teammate, and then your your teammate is actually doing good, and you you know you're out of top 16, but you still continue playing to have their type breaker. Yeah, because uh, you can potentially the push the other player down. So yeah, yeah. It, could, it could definitely could work out. All right. So game starts. Hot form versus Elki. EU versus NA. Can we finally say oh, who's stronger? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it looks like the N uh, NA has a really bad matchup here. Because that's the Zoo versus Druid, and we I know agree. that this is almost certainly a, d uh, a deck that has a huge, huge uh, favor uh, fav favorable matchup against, um, you know, that particular matchup. Yeah, and also um, the actual Zoo variant that Elk is running is, th there we go, the, uh, the Seeker one. So there's probably Sea Giants and the Seeker in there. It's pretty funny actually because he actually mulliganed away the Seeker in the start, which looks really strange to mulligan away one drop, but obviously its impact is later in the game as it gets a buff based on how many, well, if it's the six minions on the board. How good is Seeker? Yeah, it's uh, four minions on the board, right? No, six minions on the board. Yeah, yeah I and think it's six. So, but Seeker you, needs to be seventh minion. Yes, he needs to be the seventh minion, but at the same time, uh, it's really easy to do when you're playing Zoo and you have Implosion. Yeah. So it's e really easy to combo that. And especially with, creature, with creatures like Hunted Creepers, uh, like um, Game Gosses, um, Eggs, they, they always replenish like the board, so uh, it's easy to block. I was actually um, thinking that the Religious Seeker is just a bad card, a really terrible card, and look at that, I was wrong. Yeah, I think, <coughs> excuse me, when you look at it in a vacuum on its own, it doesn't look too good. But mm -hmm. when you combine it with things like Implosion, in gang boss creepers and then you also add in sea giants as well so your whole deck isn't about the seeker and trying to get it buffed because there's also two more cards in there that works off having a big board so suddenly the dynamics of zoo changes just a little bit to be able to get those big minions down and also because you've got so many then like big game hunter isn't too bad because the seeker's still a reasonable body that you can normally drop in and with, we've seen like turn eights of like dr boom filling mm -hmm. out the board and then seeker just because it's one mana it's very easy to just uh, drop in there it will be really yeah. interesting to see how the Seeker is, but there is also one uh, more card for hot form. It's Rand Black Hand. Rand Black Hand. That's very interesting. So it's a dragon, just dragon um, wood. How that pairs up with it too? And it's kind of weird, right? We didn't see anything like that yet. Yeah, we haven't seen the dragon druid, and uh, right now his hand is not great. He only has one dragon, so this means that while I drink. It will be a great card right now, but he can't play it because it will not have taunt, and you want to keep it for uh, Corruptor as well. Can you play Corruptor? I think Coin Corruptor, and then maybe. Innovate would you want to go into Innovate Wrath? Yeah. I was thinking about it because he can Otherwise, Innovate Wrath to draw as well, which might try and see a little bit more. And, but then if you want to Innovate Wrath to draw, why wouldn't you do that first? Yeah, that's true. He, I guess. It, I guess because you. So w the, the reason for that is he wants to. He's playing against two, which is a lot of or a few like relatively low health minions. So he's going to save Wrath to do the three damage to actually just clear off a minion or mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. towards mm -hmm. that. And as you said, he can just use his hero power to clear instead. So the uh, uh, the only awkward thing thing about uh, the Wrath is the fact that you probably won't play it next turn if you draw a dragon. Because then you just like to drop the Twilight Guardian or maybe another dragon like yeah. in the Azure Blake. 
No, wait, Azure Dragon is unplayable in this uh, situation. He just needs something bigger. Still no Dragon for Hot Form. Hmm. So what do you think? I mean, he, he can drop the Aspirin and then just rat down the Juggler, just to try yep. and put something on the board. Exactly the correct, um, if, we look correct at, if we look at Elka's hand now, like, his two cards in hand rely on on a, a big board, and actually Hot Form's been able to keep that in check quite well. Absolutely, and that, that Seeker doesn't look great right now. No, and it's not one of those cards where the battle cry is really good, but you can just drop it on its own. Like, you're going to drop a 1-1. Like, it's really not going to do too much. But the Argus and then the Gormok. Oh, okay. Gormok. So he's really trying to, to bait the deck around having a board. And he's drawing the cards that are relying on that, so it's not the best moment to draw all those cards. So this turn has to be defend of Argus, so just push for bigger minions and go face. You and might consider Seeker as well, because then you will have more minions. So but you have only four mana. Uh, oh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, because of the lifetime. I thought that he has hit five. So I think he pretty much has to Argus here, right? Yep. Or do, do, I don't do you see think he wants thing. to play. Uh, it's a tough one. Like, is, is there a chance he wants to play Gorma instead? To run the creeper? Uh, okay, he's going to play Argus. Nice play. That's fine, because it's coming up to turn seven for Druid as well. Seven mana for Druid, which is actually a really key uh, point, because a lot of their big cards say, like. Ancient of Lore is the seven drops, Dr. Boom, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if he's playing those cards in this deck, but again, just playing against the Druid, you've still got to be wary of those. This I was thinking so about toning up the Hunted Creeper, like the, ba uh, the basic form, because you would like to get those additional minions on your turn and not... To yeah. like you, don't, you don't want to put them in danger. And not potentially open them up to a swipe. But then the, yeah. silence, <laughs> the silence is a bit better because you have a taunted, taunted Keeper, so you silence and you kill But you birds. saw one, one uh, Keeper already. Yeah, you, you did. Because this um, puts a really difficult... Uh, puts um, Elky in a really difficult position because his, his hand is kind of dry. Like the Gormok, who practically played just for his body, which is... Not ideal, it's not super bad because it's still a 4 4 minion. And you've just seen swipe as well, so at least you. Yeah. you oh, know. oh my oh, god. This or he could draw a great card. Boom. Yeah, or well, that's a good Dr. card. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to die. Yeah, but then the minions still stay on board. <laughs> so maybe if he gets implosion, he might actually get implosion into Gormok. Yeah, he needs to, he needs to draw sick. into something because uh, this deck normally plays like Echoing Ooze as well. And, and just stuff to just fill out the board. And as you said before, he's just got three <laughs> cards. <laughs> Which um, don't benefit well, will do benefit from a full board, but really not great at all from it. Osborne is so happy about <laughs> the brand. Exhibit entrance, the uh, battlefield. He's just smiling. And Elki was really surprised, but now he's not. Now he knows what's going on. So, Elki can actually Gormog it, right? Because he can play uh, Seeker, he can play an Egg, and then Gormog. Yes, the he can do that. And I think that might actually be the play. I think that's okay, because you set up for you see giant next turn as well, and you've just seen swipe, and um, it's not you know you've he had minions on the board a bit earlier than that, and you didn't see the swipe, so you know the odds of him having two are pretty low at this point. So I, I kind of like that play. You lose like the, the buff from the seeker, but it benefit the benefit you gain is so much more. Mm -hmm. And you keep the boom bots on board as well. Yep. I so think that's Seeker has just won one. I have seen it's one. still okay. <laughs> still okay because it's just... You can think about the Seeker in this situation as a 4-4 four, four battle cry I know the flavor... Just damage. I know the flavor text of Seeker, but it's actually not really great. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, I feel like you've got to tell us now to so, see how bad it is. So like, really quarry... Uh, re re how do you say that? Reliquary? Reliquary? Reliquy. That's how I would say it. Well, uh, okay, I'm sure someone will prove me wrong. Reliquy Seeker, right? Yeah. So basically, Reliquy Seekers is like an organization like Explorers League, and they feel like they're on the same kind of level like Explor like League of the Explorers, but League of the Explorers doesn't think that they are on the same level. And that's the flavor text. Wow. Yeah, it's not, not the best flavor it's text. not the best yeah. flavor text. <laughs> but we have a, a lot of great flavor text. Double Blackwing Technicians, though. From the uh, Ancient of Law, they're pretty. They're gonna be pretty okay since they can get the uh, the effect of having the Twilight Guardian in hand. So the the three five bodies are gonna be pretty nice, but because there's not too much threat on the board, there is the four four, but that's pretty much it at the moment. But the, the problem is he kind of needs to just slow the uh, slow the warlock down. Here. If he gets a dragon, then maybe like Twilight and Corruptor. If yeah, Hot that would kill the dragon. That should be fine, but like still. Now this is scary. He needs to play that big hunter. 
Even so, with this, again, when they're down, they're still oh. too far forward. He's, he's very cool. Yeah, he, he's very cool to save, yeah. save the boom, but because it's ha it is so fairly bold. Yeah. Next, and when uh, Druid can play just a single minion board. He did draw the second dragon, so. Yeah, but now with the Sea Giant, probably you have to play the Bigger Hunter. And if you play Bigger Hunter, you'll have six mana left. So not much. You just gonna be Guardian Hero Power, I imagine. Maybe Hero Power down the. Uh, Depends how risky he wants to be his life. He could kill the boom bot to make it a little bit harder to trade and actually uh, you know, soak up some more damage there. But if the boom bot hits hard, then that's definitely a worry. Well, you can also play the minions first and then kill the boom bot so that boom bot can deal with the minions. Like, you want to soak the health. The only problem with that is it makes the trade probably a lot easier with the abusive sergeant still on the board. Well, the overall position is that Elki is in a good spot. No more taunts after that Twilight Star. Like, and he can deal with those minions with the board. There's no slide for Hulk Worm. I think as well, because Elki, he's got no cards at the moment, but because he's a warlock, he can't draw. And he's at a, a good amount of health as well. He's not actually even close to, to any potential lethal. It'd be interesting to see if Hulk Farm actually runs combo in this deck. I'm not sure if you actually have the space for it. You maybe might, you maybe might. one? You might, yeah, maybe one, possibly. Just because with like two technicians. I would not hate just cutting the combo as well. I think maybe. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I don't think he would actually play it. So it means that Elki can even be a bit more sort of adventurous with his hero power. How good My is Defender Vargas here? It's, it's decent, I think. Yeah, it's an alright kill. And you can push with damage as well. And you do have it on stack. Even though it's a great silence target. I feel like the bomb is immense value here if it trades up. Oh, oh and only oh. for one to face. It doesn't, but you still don't really have to kill the 4-2. Oh, Just the people for next and that's it, because how can Druid turn this around? Even with 10 mana and combo in hand. Let's oh. see what, like, in theory, the combo, which is the best sweeper, right? Unless uh, you can't swipe, you still can just only clear three minions with the combo and and the 4-4 four, four minion from the Agon, that's it. You still lose the board and four of the branches the board next turn, so it's kind of hard for the Druid to make a comeback here. Yeah, I mean, with, you can hero power out of, say, immediate lethal, but um, it's just... What, what, I mean, I suppose you could blow and corrupt to the 2-3 and then he's three damage off lethal. He can also like the problem is it's, it's the combat mechanic, isn't it? It's like, how is he actually, although he can survive, how is he actually going to finish the game? Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. He could also possibly just uh, corrupt the egg and then kill one of the, of the four force with the big hunter. I was thinking, why wouldn't he do that? Because it's... Hmm. Well, that, that's it. Like oh, yeah, yeah. Or he can just power all up. Alright, so well, Elki takes game number one. That was a bad matchup to start uh, to begin with for Hot Form, so I'm not. Uh, I'm sure that he's not surprised that he's losing this game, and he's not upset ab uh, about it at all because uh, usually, you know, that this game probably is just you know lost from the beginning unless you get uh, lucky with the draws and you can pull off something amazing, and then you're you're like lifted up. Because you know that you just won a really um, unfavorable matchup and uh, you can pull off a 3 0 with maybe some deck. Uh, but now he just f has, has to think about what will I counter the zoo with. I think he has a couple of tools. Like Hunter should be good versus zoo and then Paladin versus zoo. Actually, that matchup is a bit questionable. What do you guys think? Paladin versus zoo. Is it a good matchup or is it a bad matchup? I have no idea what, what kind of Paladin that is. And I would assume that it, is b it might be something creative. So if. If all dragon of the decks Paladin, <laughs> three dragon decks confirmed. <laughs> dragon Hunter, Dragon Paladin, Dragon Druid. <laughs> if three decks, are all of those three decks are following. <laughs> okay, I, Sorry, I know this deck. The, um, this is Malagos is this Hunter. Is this your Malagos Hunter deck? No Lothar? idea. Maybe we'll see. I mean, uh, I, I love Malagos Hunter. This is my favorite deck of all time. Well, maybe not of all time, but it's something I really love to play. How does it work? Well, basically, you survive. <laughs> Until turn 10, when you play a Malagos after an Emperor turn and just, you know, smash your opponent with 
Arcane really weird shots, spells. Like we can see. Yeah, arcane shots for avoiding damage. But uh, the, the finest things, to clear, uh, the to clear things are uh, explosive uh, traps oh. with Malagos for seven damage. To everything, you know. Yeah, so something I was going to mention as well in terms of hot form, what he's got left in terms of Hunter and Paladin, is that versus this type of Warlock, like both classes have access to good players below me. Obviously, there's Consecrate from Paladin, and even Muster can um, challenge the Warlock, whereas, and the Hunter has potentially explosive trap, but also imagine a Juggler Unleash combo will just swing the game so hard because the board should be full. Uh, or, you know, if the game goes in Elki's favor. Yeah, especially in uh, Elki's deck where he really wants to have full board for yeah. the Reliqui... Seeker. Seeker. Reliqui? Yeah. Relic Fairy. Seeker. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm calling Seeker. that card. <laughs> Seeker. Our Seeker. <laughs> Our Seeker is fine. That well, was a pretty good Elephant, by the way, picking out the second high name. Uh, let's uh, quickly analyze why would he play the Elephant turn 1 instead of Mad Scientist to get the traps out first. And the reason why would he do that, I assume so, would be the fact that he's playing a small amount of minions, of high-cost minions, so he wants to get those SAP to uh, just know what his plan will be. Because yeah. in a, an example, if one of the picks would be something for 7, 8, 9 mana, an example, like in Malagos, you can adjust the way you will play, uh, knowing that you have already that in hand. Or let, let's say, an example, there will be an Emperor, right? This yeah, and, the, and on top of that, the problem is one more card draw dilutes your deck. So if you draw mm -hmm. a big minion, mm -hmm. then you're less likely to, to actually win that joust with the with the elephant. So that's yeah. Uh, yeah, that's really really good play, actually. Also, maybe he likes Shaman, and he's like, Elephants, guide me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, they just keep coming. So um, turn three, I mean... Now we can't really predict what is the correct move from hot form because we have no idea how many traps he's playing. Yeah. And uh, but usually the correct thing is to play two mad scientists. Uh, ooh, flare too. A second track and normal companion. Well, flare will not be useful, so it's probably okay that he is actually cycling it and mm -hmm. throwing it outside the deck. Okay. And so that's it. Tra tra tracking is pretty good in a way that it also thins your deck. So in theory, you will get faster to Malagos the spells. Yeah. The only problem with tracking is that it might be the fact that you can actually burn your mana because uh, you have to be defensive and you need something uh, as an answer to the like immediate answer to the board and then you lose like the mana. Judging from what he's drawing and what he's he has in his deck, I would say that this is just a weird uh, hunter for now, like a more mid rangey controlish hunter, but it probably doesn't run um, the uh, the Malagos at all. And this might not even be explosive trap. He might be just bluffing. So what is this trap? No, oh, it looks like explosive man. Oh, is he just imagine, well, he's imagine just, you know, if it's not? Imagine if it's not. That would be such a sick like trap. Full commit to this like, this pretend explosive trap. Well for Elki it is an explosive trap for sure. Because everything that Hotform does seems like it is an explosive trap. But well, he just waits for a single defend of Argus and um, proceeds from that point. How long can you wait though? Like Hunter can always go with the juggler unleash. And that's turn five. That's exactly Unleash Juggler turn. Yeah, because there's a similar scenario in the Hunter Mirror, where if you're both playing aggressive hunters with explosive traps, you can, if you say got a juggler on board, kind of hold off a little bit. But that's because you both uh, cancel each other out with your hero power. But you know, Hot Farm's potentially doing four damage a turn with his hero power for five hundred lifetime. Guys, this seeker. Do you think this was worth it just to get five five? Well, like that's five. a lot of damage to face. He has power overwhelming next turn as well. So that's 12 damage. He can do basically 12 damage next turn. Hmm. And no unleash yet as well, which is pretty big. Like unleash juggler this turn would be insane. But the problem with the fact that he filled his board is that he can't play defend of Argus anymore. And Hotform can just attack with the bow into the 5-5. Five five. And if that is explosive job, well he can quick shot as well, but overall he's an okay spot here. Yeah, this is really weird as well, because he has to attack. I just because he can't what play any more is. minions, so how does he win the game? Yeah, uh, that was a weird move to just... Yeah. It wasn't as if I just did a quick count then and thought, okay, if he power overwhelmings and maybe draws like another power overwhelming, is that lethal or something? Is that why you fold off? And mm -hmm. it actually isn't. So um, again, I think Elki might have actually waited too long on this one. Maybe he needed to just bite the bullet at the start, take take the explosive trap and move on. Because also, so he could have prodded the explosive trap before uh, Hot Farm equipped the bow. Because now it's even worse. Because if you put the trap now, okay, there's three more damage from a second mm -hmm. bow charge. Mm -hmm. And that might not even be an explosive trap. Yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, if that's not an explosive trap, that's the best. Be the, the that, best that, that, that would be the biggest troll ever. Yeah. Hot from would, la would laugh so hard.
Alright, so Elki's gonna attack. And that's actually a slight misplay. No, it doesn't really make a difference if you play two minions after that. It okay. was explosive trap, guys. Okay. Awesome. I would have loved it if it was like snake trap. Well, I wouldn't even have been proud. Actually, you miss one damage. Because if you would uh, PO Mag Juggler, then you deal three damage from the minions, and you lose two damage, uh, one damage from but the five two dies. Yeah, but your knife, jugg knife juggler lives, so you de deal two damage less from the attack, but then you have three damage from the juggles. So it's it's actually one damage more. How do you have three damage from juggles? Because you play Cause you, a you play boss. a second knife juggler, and then you have an impotent ghost, so you have three juggles. Okay. And let's see if that will make a difference. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, at this point, the game's actually going to uh, turn around just a little bit. I think with the... Un unless Alki can draw some sort of like, high damage now, it's going to be over with the Savannah down. But because Hot Farm held off playing minions because of that explosive trap, the fact that he actually just pushed through it and then he wasn't particularly in lethal position made it a little bit scary. But I suppose mm -hmm. with two Savannah high mains down, Gonna, uh, one in hand and one on board, of course. He, he's pretty confident. And with that bow as well, the, the trap gave the bow one more charge and that actually gives him lethal next turn. I think the problem was that uh, Elki played his uh, flame in so recklessly yeah. into the explosive trap. That was basically adding five damage. Anyway, he didn't. It was like it was to proc the uh, seeker, but it just didn't seem mm -hmm. worth it enough because it's just even more damage. And if there's a class you're playing against that you can't really afford. To yeah. just take additional and damage from it's definitely that's the game, yeah. He needed those uh, two damage, so wish I was the worst. But uh, Hot Forum is actually taking that game, and it was a good matchup to begin with. Uh, it was interesting, and it's, as you guys said, like it, it, it was um, a bit weird just playing it with exp explosive chop, but uh, Elki was definitely looking for some more buffs, like he wanted to have as many minions on board and maybe something to buff those Yeah, minions. I mean, the Argus never came, did it? That was yeah. I think that was one of the yeah, major problems. Even if the Argus would have come, then there was no space on the board to actually play it. Yeah, after so the Seeker turn. After yeah. the Seeker, yeah. for the Seeker. And it's, like, sometimes you can fall into the trap of the new card. You you have a card in your deck that you really want to play that works in specific conditions, and you're so concerned about, like, using the card to the fullest that uh, you might put yourself in a bad spot. Lock and load. Sorry. Nice. But that's it. So it's oh. not. That's super is it fun. still Malagos? No. Yeah, no. No, it's not. You usually don't play a lock and load the Malagos in the same deck. And he's gonna go up against Secret Pal there. That has actually been doing pretty well this tournament from talking to some of the other players. I think Hoy's got some form of a uh, some form of. He Secret started with six zero actually. He's nine zero. Nine he's zero. nine zero. Yeah, now? and then we, until he's obviously played this set. Don't and know he's what the score is, but nine zero. He's only played one deck. It's insane. And Elki has a really good curve here. Job's done. Hmm. The lock and loads are a bit unfortunate for Hot Farm because it's not a card you want to start with. Yes. And um, because you just don't have the mana to combo. And when you like, I suppose like turn three lock and load tracking is okay-ish, but it's still is not. Is it? It's just because it draws a lot of cards. That's well, it gains you a lot, a lot of cards that fall into your deck, but it's still not great. It's like it's the best outcome of having lock and load in your hand this early. Well, apparently he feels like this deck is okay. Even though he is 1-2 at the moment. He's I won a game with it. <laughs> yeah, he won a game with it, and uh, I think it looks good. Oh, that, that was quite unfortunate with the Dr. Boom into Pulse Shadow Joust. Yeah, you'd imagine there's only three Materian that are the, uh, the, the, the top curve. Yeah. Well, one of the highest. Through. Yeah, it's just because he, he jousted one of the highest minions in the deck. <laughs> That's all versus all the rest that he's got. So. And look at that. Oh, the people will actually get buffed from uh, Hunter's traps, so it's not the ideal minion to play, actually, against... Um, I mean, sorry, Dan, uh, yeah, it's, it's not the ideal spell. Out, yeah. And there is the oh, Keeper Udo as well. Man. Well, it's a great card. I think it should be played in every part uh, of I game. actually play this in my secret card. Yeah. It's really strong. Because you've always got minions on the board, and when you see procs of things like event... So we look at the board now, there's 3-2, three, 3-3, three, 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 one, ones. When you place uh, uh, the older man, then you've got another 3-4, probably another 3-3 three, three onto the 1-1, one, one, or to plus 2, plus 2 on the 1-1. One, one. Then, like, there's so many targets that are, like, threatening but not massive that it's really difficult to deal with them all. Yeah. Keeper of your demand. <laughs> it's um, kind of like a mini quartermaster, right? Yeah. When you think about it. It's a mini it's quartermaster, just, yeah. It's just good because it's got the flexibleness of, 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 like, being able to just deal with any other mini yeah, your yeah, opponent As plays. I mentioned, it's, uh, it's like... It's, 
over spark, like from the from the the old times before the nerf, where you could just target something and it was changing into either a five five or one one. So with seeker, it kind of like works in a way that you can change a doctor boom into the three three. Yeah, yeah but the problem was that uh, I think Master was changing Ragnaros into a five five. So it's it's about the silence that was built yeah. in yeah. Think Master, and so it wasn't not about like the stats itself. The stats as well, like you could deal with the creatures after that. I think one of the benefits as well is if you're in like um, sort of a, a small board situation, your opponent plays a, a big minion on an empty board, and then you can fall with the the, uh, the keeper, and it actually like kills it, and then requires another answer as well because it has one more health. Oh look at that! First What's time look at loading competitive gaming. <laughs> I oh, both. That's actually okay. pretty sick. The the one thing that I think Hot from uh, forgot. Uh, next uh, last turn was the fact that uh, the secret keeper would be buffed by his trap, yeah. and he was he did only trade one minion from um, uh, from the hounds, you know. So if there would be a single um, consecration, the secret keeper wouldn't have been killed. Yeah, that would have been horrible for them. The quality is an interesting choice. Yeah, it's Paladin as well. That's not something you see too often in a mm -hmm. secret Paladin. Yeah. Because normally it's just all uh, much more aggressive style, and you know, you, you normally runs like a silence to get through the taunt. Yeah, people never play around it when, when you see secrets. When you see secrets, it's a clear sign there is no equality in his deck. Yeah. I can absolutely ignore the fact that the card exists. And then, surprise! Like, even now, he could play the Keeper of Alderman onto the secret, uh, the secret Keeper to stop it dying, and then it can still get buffs going forward. Yep. Exactly. And it only loses one attack. It's like lose one attack, gain two health, and survive the trap. Mm. And yeah. you have this. Or we could do it to the shredder and keep keeper. make the shredder even like <laughs> more awkward to deal away. with. Like it's so flexible that card. It's really <laughs> You're probably fine with shredder dying here though. Oh, that two free is not bad. None may steal our Actually, the fact that it does not silence the minion is pretty good as well. Yeah, it's like, really nice. Yeah. Oh, quick shot's gonna lock it down though. But this is the thing, because the damage is, sp uh, sorry, the sort of threats are not massive, but spread across multiple uh, minions. Then like it's a bit awkward to like, well if I've got to deal with sort of three mid sort of threat minions as opposed to just one big one. Like you look at um, the mysterious challenger on an empty board, it gets the buff, and then you can do things like execute BGH and things to, to just deal with that one minion. But when it's spread across so many. This is another card that is uh, the interesting secret paladin with the Aldor Peacekeeper. That combined with this, uh, the Keeper of Alderman, it's like, just locks down so many minions in the deck. Yeah, it's just a 1-5 then. It seems like paladin is getting kind of new build right now with all those cards. I like it. It's it's fun. Just uh, reduce the minions to different states and uh, move forward. Right now it seems like does Holdform even have a way to deal with this? There is 4 damage with two Silver Champion and Elf's hand. And he has a pretty good board. Yeah, I think um, a really good draw. I mean, but look at the deck. I doubt he plays it, but like a Hound Master now would actually be pretty good. Gives the uh, the high main a lot of health, and he could have traded one more minion away. I wonder if he's playing even the Hound Master. Yeah, exactly. I don't, like I don't think he will. I don't think he will. There's not enough beasts, and the fact that he has lock and load and a lot of spells just loses the odds of any any minions. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, lock and load is can give you a hand master, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. true. Oh, oh, and then that, turn another. seven. Look who shows up second time in a row for Erki. <laughs> yeah, he's good at that. So yeah. it seems. Not that he really needs it actually. Oh, that's that's okay. The three damage is super important at the moment. But that's lethal. Yeah, that's lethal. Oh yeah, I didn't even see the truth. <laughs> that's that's, <laughs> that's, <absolutely laughs> that, that's okay because he still wins. Yeah. So LQ is 2-1. It was either against Hostful. There was a chance that he would actually know when here if the 3-4 would kill the 3-3. Free free. That's why attacking with the 3-3 free would be a bit better. Yeah, didn't play around that air. Uh, yeah, didn't, didn't play, play around this direction. But like who can blame him? Hey, when lock and loads in the game, you've got to play around everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to do that, that arena style explosive shot positioning to uh, to avoid Wait, that as well. Wasn't that trap just in his deck? Because he used to lock and load for one spell, right? No, two spells. No, oh, two, okay. Yeah. He had arcane shot and uh, what was the second secret? Tracking. Might have been tracking. I'm, I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he got it off lock and load. Because so it, it was either that or it was the draw he played I think lock he and played load. Explosive, on. like lock and load into explosive into arcane shot. But it doesn't matter yeah. though. 
Next game is starting right now. Hot form only with his Paladin. A really good deck. And Elki is still Paladin Madrid. This is last year standing. It's not Conquest. So if you win with deck, you continue winning with the deck. Just keep it. I'm a little bit worried though, because Hot Form's Paladin looks standard. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little nah. bit disappointed. I'm sure that will be something odd. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that, yeah, Look that's, at that. that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. He has a mystic. I mean, the value of the traps are not, unfortunately not that, you know, great when it comes to uh, playing against paladins. But at the same time, uh, you can benefit the most if you're playing paladin yourself. Yeah, because they can then combo with their secrets you've yeah. maybe drawn as well. Yeah, exactly. These are really crazy hands from both players, actually. Double muster's pretty decent, um, and obviously you, you always want the uh, the mini bot, but then like on the off arm side, two mini bots muster shredder. Now true silver with the Kezen for backup if he wants to just snatch a, a secret. Well, Elki has the Cog Hammer, which is a great tempo card. Yeah, I mean, now he can actually just, uh, if he wanted to, he could have just killed the 2-2 two -two that isn't shielded with the, with the mini bot and then just cock hammered again. It's probably fine as well. Yeah, this is, this is nice. Because he knows there's no coin for Consecrate as well. So, masterful battle battles. Hmm. I was thinking about keeping the 2-2 two -two on board. I mean, just to trade it with a 1-1. One -one. And leave your opponent two two on board too. Oh, but okay, I, I, this works uh, either way. Yeah, probably was fine. And Elki just will replenish the board most likely. Clear the board with two uh, recruits and uh, let's justice me. just to replay into the second master battle. It's crazy how much value that card just gives. Yeah, that's a really good board for Paladin. Like the three mana gets a free free. Creatures spread out, and you still have the weapon as well. So That's something we don't see every day. It, it might be a dragon paladin, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But I'm taking a long shot. Yeah. It has a dragon in it. Does that make it a dragon paladin, maybe? Um. Yeah, interesting deck. So it's going to be like... Hotform is such a baller. Like He just came to Europe to one of the most important tournaments of the year, just after getting the finals of BlizzCon, and he's running a Lock and Low Hunter, a Dragon Druid, and the Dragon Paladin? I'm not sure what he was thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this Consecrate is okay. Yeah. Depending I, on what comes out of the Shredder. I so. guess this might be one of the best Consecration we will get uh, after seeing two massive battles. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, you should go for it. You still have mode control with the River Crocolus jumping out on the Tidal Shredders. By the way, how does the River Crocolus steer the Tidal Shredder? I mean, he has six paws, but... That's good. He's got so many arms. It doesn't matter how many controls there are. Come for the heal by instead, okay. Ooh, Doctor Dr. 6 on 10 6. Mysterious Challenger. Just in time. This is really rough now because Mysterious Challenger on a board with other minions as well makes it so much better. Because you don't really want the Avenge on the 6 6, you want it on something else. Yeah, that's true. So, which secret do you steal? Because you can. You either steal Competitive Spirit or something random. Because if you just make one attack, it pops Noble Sacrifice, Avenge. And redemptions, so only one remains. You probably want to steal a random secret, maybe keep, uh, maybe steal Avenge. If just to have a chance of something better. Let me yeah, you gotta just sort of reduce the, the chance of that combo design. working. Because like, as I said, with so many uh, minions on board, the Avenge proccing on like one of the one ones or even the one two mm -hmm. is actually pretty good. But it, now we can see how. Um, so it wasn't get down. How Cousin Mystic is just. Not an answer to the serious yeah. challenger. It that it almost didn't do that. So it's not a, not a bad. Oh wait, it is actually a bench because redemption would have been triggered second, Job I guess. Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Report it is a bench. He actually got that avenge, which is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Now with the follow up as well of having the consecrate, it's going to be pretty strong next turn. Even though the minions have been buffed, two of them are still in consecrate range, and then you know he's got he's got a lot of board himself, and with avenge, he should be able to do with a seven seven pretty well. But mm -hmm. on the other on the other hand, there is a cog hammer, and he can just kill the free two of the two two. He knows it's avenge. Hope that uh, avenge lands on something like a two two. And now he's got, yeah, he's got the peacekeeper, right? Uh, yeah, just peacekeeper, peacekeeper the avenge target. Let he can peacekeeper, or he can just uh, cog hammer and kill it with the seven seven divine shield. Yeah, that's like he, true. He has options. And then just follow up with Tyrion. That's uh, Next not normally pretty reasonable. Pretty best card in the game, almost. 
It feels like this, this is the best legendary drop in the game. Tyrion? Yeah. At least for a long time. It's definitely the best class like right? Oh, yeah. 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 Are you biased because your name is Lothar and Lothar is a paladin, so you like stay with the paladins? Uh, that's not the reason why I'm So, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the divine shield is just so insane. Yeah. Unless there's a big game hunter, but there's, that's not the case. Yeah, what do you even like here, actually? This is pretty rough. I guess Shredder popped the Divine Shield? Or the well, there's nothing else, right? You can't you can't lay on hands. You know, you can't Consecrate does nothing. Time. Absolutely I nothing. Wonder. So Shredder is the best card you can play. And yeah, just the, pop the, Divine The problem shield. as well is, like, so going forward, like, one turn in time to Hot Farm's next one, is that, yeah, he's got Lay on Hands, and it might help him stay alive another turn, but his whole turn will be Lay on Hands, which is why the card's really rough when you're behind. Um, sort of, he heals for eight, but as we can see, that'll just get negated anyway. And the cards you draw, you can't play till the following turn, so it's really rough. All right, so Consecration is not lethal. It seems Tyrion is still the play. And yeah, I like just go, go Tyrion and go face. Yeah, just... It's so much damage. damage. And you still have Consecrate, Karkama next turn as well, guaranteed. And then, you know, you might still have the Aldor if you can deal with the 7-7. Seven, seven. So, it's so much damage. And then he also has to deal with Terry, I think. It's really much the game at this point. Yeah, it seems a like... Double lay on hands. Double hands. That was really heavy. What? <laughs> That's a really top heavy deck. But it seems like Consecrate is actually... Is there anything he can do? Well, Consecrate clears two of the two minions, right? Uh, he can. Oh, uh, yeah, it's not Yeah, but he's still dead. Yeah, he's, he's still dead to Tyrion. Yeah. Even if he would he deal can, with he Tyrion, can play the Tyrion, weapon, the weapon is just, yeah. just kills him instantly. Well with one swing, and that's it. So it seems like Hogwarts will not be able to make it to top 16, but he can still continue playing. This is Swiss, so you are never really el eliminated. He's got to put more practice in with these crazy decks, right? Absolutely. Brought those decks, he had fun playing with them, so why not just uh, continue playing? Yeah, and again, we see this power of Secret Paladin. I mean, it's just, it's probably one of the best decks, if not the best deck uh, at the you moment. Think so? I, I think, yeah. Okay. So, so what, what do you think is against, not, not so much against Secret Paladin, but overall? I, I personally agree with the Secret Paladin, like Paladin being the strongest class right now. Lothar, do you think something is better? I think just Midrange Druid might be just always better in, uh, in any kind of meta game because it's always viable. It's not like the best deck in the meta game, but it's always viable, and you will can yeah. win against anything, right? Because while Grove and Innovators are cheating, cheating on the curve, and uh, but I I can see the point that Paladin might be better uh, at the same time because you know it just uh, packs so much. I just think answers. like a lot of the uh, sorry, a lot questions. of the turns are so swingy. Like mm -hmm. again, you know, we all know Mysterious Challenger, it's a super powerful card, and like all it takes is to get that card by turn six, and that that alone might win you the game. And it's not like you rely on a legendary; you're playing two of it in, in your deck. Yep. So that one card could swing the game so hard. And like if if your opponent can't really answer it the following turn straight away, it's probably just game because then you've got more stuff to follow up with. So absolutely, you also have like a lot of other tempo cards, so you can like start the zombie chow, go into the cog hammer, and then Doctor Boom and Tyrion. And uh, the other problem uh, when you face Paladin is that most of the time you don't know which Paladin version you're you're facing. So there can be four secrets, there can be six secrets, it can be the Murloc Knight version, and now we have Keeper of Uldaman as well, which is a great card and it's bringing a lot of value to the Paladin class. Yeah, and even within that, you get the decks that are like way more aggressive as well. Like, because not all the secret paladin lists run secret keeper.